Hello figurine collectors. This is my first video for the Sticky Monster Lab series of toys. Uh, I think I knew about this thing, this these toys several years ago, but you know, I'm pretty busy collecting more realistic looking things like uh, you know, cars and robots and stuff and things with more detail. I guess that's what I'm getting at. But uh, for some reason, you know, I was walking around in a store and these caught my eye again. And I thought I'd give them a try. They're very simple looking creatures. So I had to learn a little bit about this, first of all. So here's their website, stickymonsterlab.com. So they're a multidisciplinary design studio. Graphic design, gra uh, animation, and uh, product design and stuff like that. So these guys partner up with real companies. Nike, Nissan, you know, Hyundai, and all that stuff. They have a YouTube channel, not many videos on it, but they're there if you want to check it out. And this is an old company, 2007. So yeah, they've been around for a long time, and it's taken me a long time for me to finally come around to them. So, they have this uh, series, they have a couple different series now, but this is the, the running series. And I believe it's because they made a video for, I think it was Nike, or I forget which company, but... They created a bunch of characters that are running and so now that we have these characters in plastic form here in the the running series so this has been opened but it used because uh, i don't know when this series came out but it could have been 10 years ago for all i know there's some sort of hologram sticker here two of them actually or two established 2007 Here's an outline of all the figures you could possibly get. They're all blind box. You don't know what you're getting. You just buy a box and one of these is going to be in there. So I think this is the Secret Chase one. It looks like a robot or a Gundam or something like that. Anyways, 5, 20. No, maybe 15, 19 different, 19 different uh, molds here. So that's a big release. <clears throat> Let's see what it says here. Yeah, just some information there, sorry. Just websites and stuff. I hate how... Designers very often don't think about practicality. I can read that, sure, but old people can't read that. You know, you have all this space, all this white space. You can make it a little larger than that. Like, uh, advertising space, free. They don't take advantage of it. Okay, down here, what do we have? Anything? bunch of QR codes and stuff. Great Twins is apparently the company that makes this. Licensee and manufacturer. But no date. This font is so small it's insane. So if anyone knows when these first came out, please leave a comment. Be curious how old this thing is and why I paid so much money for it. <clears throat> okay, so this has been opened again. This uh, is a stand for the guy. And we have a running guy with a stereo. I think it's awesome, actually. I'm curious how tall this guy might be. Going to the tip of the stereo is like 78 millimeters, or a little bit over three inches. Okay. <clears throat> so, <laughs> this guy's awesome. All right, let's get the pick out and see what kind of details we have on this thing. I guess we'll start with the stereo. So it's got the actual, you know, whole printing. It's not, they're not, this is just a flat surface though. They print it on the holes. There's no molding. It would have been nice if those were actually recesses. A uh, little tape port here. That's flat again. Only the groove is three dimensional. Uh, it's just blacked out here. The knobs do stick out a little bit, but these are generally, uh, these stick out a little bit too. It would have been cool if they actually had some printing on here though, you know? Alright, so the handle is actually painted black, so that's nice. And then, yeah, there's a little bit of a chamfer on that. The bottom as well. Seems to be two pieces, three pieces to make the stereo alone. So now we got this guy's head. Doesn't spin. This hat. There's a slot in it for the back of the hair, I guess. He's wearing it backwards. Little pin button up there. But yeah, that doesn't seem to come off. It's glued together. This blue is not shiny. It's very matte. It's a matte finish blue. It gives it a sense of classiness, I think, because I don't know why. There's <laughs> something about it. But you can see it's 
two pieces to make the body and this gap is kind of bad. Yeah. It's nice and tight up here, but kind of loose here. Now this arm, I don't think that moves either. No, nope, there's no articulation whatsoever. I can understand that not moving. And then the legs, yeah, they're just glued in there. They don't move. And then there's a peg hole for that stand. This guy's wearing like those high socks, you know. I think of like a uh, old tennis players. What was his name? John McEnroe or something? Yeah, playing tennis in the high uh, socks. I used to wear socks like that when I was a kid, because I'm an old dude. Okay, well, yeah, this is it. It's a very interesting little monster, I guess. It's got three fingers and a thumb, so a four-fingered monster. He's just kind of got a blank face on him, and he's wearing a number 17. So, uh, I don't know if he's competing or something like that, but it's strange, you know? I get these resin die-cast, well, resin uh, 164 scale cars, and they have so much detail, it's just insane. I'll talk about them for 30 minutes. And then this thing, <laughs> this is like the total opposite. It's so basic, but there's a charm about it. It's so ridiculously simple. It's literally two, a, one spear here, one spear here, and it's blended together. And then they stuck arms and legs on it in a hat. All right, that's kind of nice to stereo, but. Uh, if I knew the program Blender, I bet a Blender artist could make this figure in that program within two hours, if I had to guess. I could make this in SolidWorks in probably four to five hours, maybe? I don't know. Uh, making the hands might be hard. SolidWorks isn't really meant for bodies and organic creatures. But anyways, uh, yeah, this base is really clear. Very impressive. So I don't know if this has ever been displayed. I have a feeling it was just cut open just to figure out what it is. But it was never actually handled before because it's so clean. Uh, yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> it's so, so basic, but I, I, I can't get over it. All right, let me, uh, let me get the uh, spin thing out and we'll compare it to a couple other figures and toys or whatnot. Cartoons and my cartoon base of Japan. And the, I've actually watched their entire playlist. They only have like 30 videos on the uh, the Sticky Monster Lab YouTube channel. So, and a lot of them are only like 30 seconds long. And I think they mostly make commercials. There are two movies on there, but they're only like 20, 15, or 20 minutes long. Anyways, I highly recommend you take an hour to watch everything they've put out and decide for yourself if you like it. Okay, so designer toys, from my experience, which isn't too much, they're expensive. And very often, well, in this case, uh, it's really questionable if that's worth the money. You can look up the prices of these things online, and it's highly understandable that you think I'm crazy for buying this. But prior to that, there's a brand called 3A, and they're still around, I believe. And this is what got me into collecting designer toys. Not this, this is called Square. They have a line of 1 6 scale and 1 12 scale. This is part of the 1 12 scale or the 6 inch figures. Uh, and this is part of the uh, World War Robots series, I believe. So it's a little robot figure. A little bit of articulation. This thing looks crude because it's actually made of vinyl. It's not hard plastic, it's vinyl. But what I like about 3A is look at the weathering. It's insane. Uh, all the paint washes. Uh, I didn't actually bother to bring out a robot, but the robots are really good too. But anyways, here's a 3A square for reference. I could see those are living in the same cartoon world. Here's a 3A action figure from their action portable line. So this is 6 inch 112 scale. Now, look at the weathering on this guy's helmet. It is three dimensional. You know, it looks like it's been shot at or like thrown around, right? Is chipped paint, paint washes, and then this guy literally has clothes. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't understand how people are making clothes for a, a person this short. I don't know if the pocket actually functions, maybe not, but 
I mean, look at the stitching. This is a, this, these are cargo pants. The pocket is actually on the outside of this layer of cloth. They don't have much articulation, 3 A's. The articulation is actually generally horrible. This construction of their bodies is just not on par with other action figures, but the the detail of the paint and the clothing is just what got me into them. So, yeah, but they priced themselves out of my uh, sense of logic. So I stopped collecting them a good five to ten years ago, I would say. All right, so now you can see the these two do not fit in the same universe, I think, unless this is like a pet of that guy or something. Which could be. It's just like a pet monster. Because actually, if you look at the stereo, the stereo looks like it could be 112 scale. It looks like a boombox he could carry. So, yeah, alright, alright, interesting. Another one I'll put up here is a Funko keychain. Funko Pops keychain of uh, the Mandalorian. I took the little keychain out of his head, and I just have some poster putty sticking him there. So he's very small. That's that's not going to work in any. That's a strange cartoon universe if these two are walking around. And then I bought this loose at a local toy shop. I knew nothing about it, but I do know it says Kid Robot on the bottom. So I believe this is a vinyl designer toy also. It's Darth Vader, but it's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Darth Vader. So, I like Darth Vader, so... Now those two could get along, I think. They're in the same... same height league. So actually... Sorry. I guess I'll... They could fit in. The small monsters could fit into a 112 scale universe. Or you know, whatever this thing came from, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Alright, well, let's get this guy spinning on its own. <laughs> it's so, so funky. Well, what do you guys think? Yeah. <laughs> Ignoring price. I, I could even understand people not wanting these, even if they cost a dollar. You know, it's just, it's, I find my hobby tastes are continually evolving. You know, I'm constantly looking at new you know, franchises as I get bored of old franchises. Like 3A, I got bored of them, even though they're fantastic. They got too pricey, so I got bored, and that's that, you know. I got Hot Wheels, I got high-end uh, cars, but you know, at the same, then I also collect Choro Qs, and now Fat Boys cars. So, collecting is a, a dangerous, dangerous thing to do, <laughs> at least for your wallet. So, the, the thing is, I'm afraid I already know I'm going to collect a few more of these things, uh, as expensive they, as they are. What I do think, though, about designer toys is they almost never lose value. I, I don't know, I haven't sold any of my 3A stuff, but the prices I see my 3A stuff go for seem to be pretty high on eBay. Whether or not people actually buy that stuff, I don't know. That's a different thing entirely. But I see the prices of these are quite expensive on online. These sticky Monster Lab figures, so... But I'm gonna try to get some more. Yeah, they're small enough that I, I'm willing to take it on. I actually wish they were even half the size of this. If they could have... They could be the, half the size, they could still have this much detail. But, uh, obviously that's probably not going to happen. So, I appreciate you guys watching this today. And, uh, stay tuned for some other Sticky Monster Lab, uh, monsters. Alright, we'll see you guys. Bye.